Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. We're almost done with our fourth version of the task list. This version uses React for the client side and actually shares the same server side with version three, which is basically doing Ajax with uh, JSON data spent back, sent back and forth. We have it so we can add. We're missing two features right now. One is the ability to delete our tasks and the other is the ability to create a new user. So deleting the tasks, our, we have code right here that makes our unordered list. And the way we've generally done this is when you click on a task, it goes away. Well, if we want that to happen here, we need to have a click handler. So an on click that happens on each of the individual tasks. And for each one, I want to do something like this dot delete task, and I want to pass them the index, okay? Uh, we made it so that our delete code uh, works with exactly that, uh, and we need a method so that we can have the delete task. So we have our uh, handle our add click there, and actually if I'm gonna be consistent handle delete click would be our consistent naming scheme. Handle delete click takes an event. Okay, so what do we need to do here? Well, turns out we need to do something much like what we did in version three. Now as you scroll through versions three, you'll notice you don't see a delete anywhere. And that's because the binding for the delete was actually done right inside of the loading. So every time we loaded stuff in, we added onto it, and that included the on click handler. So this right here is the code for doing a delete. If we paste that in. So it fetches the delete route, it posts, uh, everything seems to be fine there. Um, I, here is actually, wait, is that what I am passing through on delete? I am not passing through the event. So we're gonna use just the variable name i, that is what is sitting right there. And then we get a response. It is either gonna be true or false. If it is false, then we need to set the state such that the task message is our string. If it is true, then we uh, have deleted it and we need to load task and clear out the message. And we have a set state that clears the message right there. So there we go. Um, yeah, and we're reloading the tasks. Let's see if that works. So we log in. Up, oh, okay. Uncaught and promise load tasks not defined. We did this last time as well. And by we, I mean me. Uh, so load tasks needs to be called on the this that was bound. Oh, I note that the make videos went away, so it kind of worked there. Indeed, there we go. Okay, so delete is working. If we log out and log back in, we have that Okay. So delete works. There's only one feature that we don't have yet, and that is the ability to create a new user. Uh, in a certain sense, we can't be certain that everything's worked because we've always been doing it on one user. Uh, we haven't verified that different users have different lists for things, but given that we're using the same server side, we would expect that to happen. We shouldn't expect it though. We should make sure that it actually does happen and test it out. So this is first dealt with up here in our login component. So the login component already has a login event so that when they click on the login button, it calls login. 
When they click on create user, it's supposed to call create user, but that doesn't exist yet. Okay, so we need to create user. And once again, it might be useful to come over here and grab the create user that we had previously. So let's go find our, uh, there's a login. Right after login, we can add create user. The username and password are once again coming from our state, not from elements in the uh, in our HTML display. We go to create route, we're posting, we use the username and the password, we get back the data, it could be a true or false, I will not forget to do this dot load tasks when we get there. Um, Actually, in this case, there's actually a do login uh, because we're putting a new person in there. It winds up being basically the same. And we need to have a similar thing where we are going to set not a login message, but a create message <clears throat> and say user creation failed. We can come up here, in fact, are we, yeah, we can come up here. We already have a create message. It starts off as the empty string. That create message is being added to our span. Okay. On first appearances, that looks like we have most of this. Let's make sure we can still log in with our original user. We create the user, they have nothing there. Oh, actually that's functionality I would want to change. That should be cleared out uh, when a task is added. That's easy enough to, to change. And click task two, log out, go in as Mark, go in as Lewis, I'm assuming, and I believe that's the same uh, thing that we had. So I think we might actually have an error in our create user for, indeed, yep, we grabbed the login name and the login password and not the create name and the create password. That would be significant here. Uh, and there was also another minor detail, which is when the ad is clicked, of uh, if it works. So if it doesn't work, if it fails to add, I, I don't care about this so much, but I do want to have it so that the new task in our state is also emptied out. Because remember, new task is what gets displayed for that text field. Let's try this again. So, Yes. That takes us in. Okay, this gets cleared out, which makes me happy. Make sure I can log back in as our first user. And we can log in as our second user. And there we go. We have a completed task list using React for the client side. It has all the functionality that we've had with our previous versions. Uh, and note that the one of the really important things to, to point out here is we didn't write, and we have a separate controller here, but all that it's doing is giving back that main view. Okay, We're able to use all the routes for our Ajax calls here on task three. And this is the biggest advantage of having our uh, back end just returning JSON data to us. Because it returns JSON data, it's very independent of how the front end worked. So whether we do it by altering HTML the way we did here, or using React code the way we did here, uh, does not have, have an impact on the way that the back end works. And of course, the other advantage here is if we wanted to have, for example, a mobile app, it could also communicate with the same backend 
by sending JSON back and forth. So that's it for, uh, for version number four of our task list and our coverage of React. Up next, we're actually going to make it so that our data model uses a real database. So we'll start talking about slick and doing data binding uh, on our server side when we come back for more videos.